we'll give Michael a moment to dial in. And uh, Julia had uh, posted information in the chat room. I put it in the notes for today. And Dr. Tim may have already read this. And it says, um, wanted to let you and listeners know of a free streaming documentary called Source, It Is Within You. It's a science done by Joe, Dr. Joe Dispenza and his team uh, done on the effects of meditation and on the body and mind. You can watch the documentary at drjoedispenza.com free for the next three days. So I've got that information in the notes for today. And uh, thank you for that information. And I'm going to welcome Michael. Thank you, dear heart, and welcome, everybody. Delighted that you're here. Delighted that I'm here. Got a good workout in the garden this morning. Our new species garden decided to sprout um, pokeweed. And I had pokeweed weed roots four inches in diameter. Unbelievable in just a matter of a few weeks. Those things grow like crazy. So anyway, got my workout, a little sweat in, and, and ready for some uh, movement of the mind and being. So glad that you're with us. Looking forward to what happens today, what unfolds, where we go with this topic of uh, first century Aramaic forgiveness. And the defeat of the mind. Really, I'm, I'm realizing more and more what it comes down to is what people call the mind is where they expect to find their solutions, where they expect to find resolution of things in their lives. When in fact, that's the device that's the source of their problems. If they're if the mind is not used properly, you know we we talked about once before the uh, insight that Job had after all that drama and trauma that he went through. He came to a conclusion: what was going on? Oh, that which I feared most has come upon me. That which I dreaded has happened to me. Hmm. So. Conclusion, through the mind, you get to create what happens in your life. If you misuse the mind, then a misused creation comes and bites you in the butt. So the work becomes very, um, it becomes much more imminent in the world where you live, move, and have your being as opposed to it being some sort of an intellectual journey or whatever people have made out of, uh, of this journey of awakening to being. There, I see a lot of conversations around lately where people are talking about how there's no such thing as free will. And people who only know how to live in a replicate mind that is a mind that simply replicates whatever's in it, I can see how they come to that conclusion because, you know, their basic uh, uh, life story is written in the book, Why Is This Happening to Me Again? Because never rising above what's already stored in the mind, what's already locked in from the generations, people play out and create the Why Is This Happening to Me Again experience. And the genius of this man, Yeshua, 2,000 years ago, to understand that whole process and understand how to collapse and access the hidden parts of one's own mind. Wow. Just monumental. Monumental. So if you're out there in listener land and you have a thought for us, last day of the week, it's Friday. I'd love to hear your voice. I'd love to hear what's going on in your world. How has this week of shows fit together for you? Has it aroused any questions for you, any puzzling thoughts? Has it given you any opportunities to learn forgiveness? Has it advanced your ability to apply forgiveness and or aroused questions about any of the above? If so, then it would be awesome if you're on one of those stations where we can't see you, our call-in number is 563-999-3581. If you call that number, you'll be listening to the show. And then if you push 1, we'll be having a conversation. We have a hand up. 
Awesome. Let's say hello. It is 206, I believe. This is David. Hi. Hey, how are you guys? Hey, we're rocking. How about you, sir? Oh, good, good. I, I got a, a day off, but I wanted to kind of share with everybody my experience with a quantum still point that I did um, a little bit less than a week ago and the uh, facts. Awesome. I'd love to hear what the uh, what the upshot is, how it's all fitting into your world, especially uh, with all the yeah, work you've done in the past. Yes, yes. This is like a, it's kind of taken me over – like uh, very noticeable, like this borderline that I would uh, go over, retract, go over, and um, and not really pass through. Um, and I feel like this completely passed through to all the things inside of me, I guess, I was really afraid of facing. And it's just made it a lot, a lot more smoother to just process out. And even if I'm experiencing uh <clears throat> like upset or uncomfortable emotions in a social setting, it's not even an issue. I mean, I'm doing a lot of new stuff. I'm training um, in a new ICU uh, RN uh, job that I have, and it's it's a very highly detailed job, and um, I'm just handling it a lot easier than I normally would. So if I'm hearing you, there are things that you were bumping up against previously that – you either didn't, couldn't, wouldn't, or just backed off of handling, and now that that's moving for you, is that what I'm hearing? Yes, or, or I would try to white knuckle it through and just push through, and I think that wasn't. I mean, even though I would make it through, it would just be just. It would be too <clears throat> too much for me, and and since everything's just really softened, relaxed, um, just. Dreams are coming up, processing, just naturally, just allowing and accepting this um, process on a way deeper level than I ever have. It's, it's. I feel like I'm back home in a normal state of beingness, and I've missed that awesome. for a long, long time. Yeah, for a very long time, I missed that. Even though I would have like little and at sometimes sustain um, experiences of this, this is more like very like anchored and set and it feels very solid in my being and um, yeah, very comfortable too. And I'm just amazed. So I'm, I'm hearing then that it's uh, you got it in your body. Like, yeah. you know, it's yours. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. What yeah. kind of things have you done in the past to get to this stage, and how is this different? Well, I've done a lot of meditation, yoga, body work, a lot of uh, union analysis, uh, analysis, transpersonal psychology, probably about 15 years of uh, different forms of therapy. I've done the Course of Miracles, um, a lot of Buddhism, um, Taoism, uh, a lot of body work. Um, you said you'd done EMDR for some time? Yeah, I've done EMDR for probably five years. And that really wow. opens things up. If you don't have the tools to eradicate and cancel, then it's just, everything is just kind of like in an upheaval. I mean, it does help for me. That's my experience. Um, but doing the, practicing all the tools and doing the codependence, the interdependence, and then doing the quantum still point was most definitely a very fast-tracked uh, process that if you just get out of the way and allow it, your life just changes, and, and it does feel like I'm in, like, a different world, a very beautiful world that I'm experiencing. Mm. That's awesome. That's awesome. One of the things that I'm starting to understand about the process, and as I shared with you, I think you're person number eight that I've done this whole um, protocol with, is that... Um, you know, we're given this body-mind unit, which, of course, we didn't invent, we didn't create, but it was created, however that happened. And my take is that it's 
design is self-healing and self, well, what word should I look at? Self-advancing. And then we're given the ability to put something else on top of it, which science has been calling epigenetics, that we can, through our thoughts, interfere with or change the processes of the natural order of the structure, distort it, traumatize it, carry those traumas around. And the epigenetic process, the, the input, the broadcast system for it, uh, my, how I'm understanding it, you know, when I go to the opening words in the book of John where we're told it says, in the beginning was the word and the word became flesh, in Aramaic, it doesn't say that, but rather it says in the beginning was the mind energy, and the mind energy became flesh. And that this power of choice and the ability to originate thoughts, literally, all of the, those thoughts are stored in this system they're calling epigenetics, and it has influence and impact on physiology, on mental, emotional processes, on, on everything, disease processes, healing processes. And that whole structure, as I am understanding it, you know, when they, <clears throat> pardon me, when they said the sins of the father are passed, yea, into three and four generations, that word sin being an archery term in Aramaic that just means miss the mark, that the epigenetic energetic patterns originated by the mind go from generation to generation. And, you know, we're brought up in an environment that has a certain attitude, a certain way of doing things, a certain uh, set of thoughts and behaviors, and that tends to go from generation to generation. And all of that is held in the mind. If you go to the scriptures, they talk about the mind of man, and then they talk about what is not a religious idea, but the mind of Christ, that there's a, a higher, more powerful mind, and that the mind of man would be, as I'm, you know, really starting to understand it as I'm walking people through this and getting the feedback that I've gotten from you and from other folks that I've done it with, is that when we can take that moment, and to me the objective of the three days is to assist in becoming aware of wherever resistance is, realizing that in Aramaic the word Satan describes or, or de defines as the resistor one who misleads, and when we have resistance somewhere in tissue, it's because there's an energy there that we don't want to deal with, and whatever data is stored there epigenetically becomes the lie, becomes the thing that misleads us. So the average person, when you invite them to be responsible for something in their lives, go into the, no, not me, resistance, literally, physiologically. So one of the purposes of the three days is to notice where those resistances are and to practice softening and opening them and and then doing that getting to the point where even if just for an instant and that's why what led me to name the process into being and quantum still point is that quantum still point is the moment at which the mind lets go and to the degree that there's willingness, whatever's in that epigenetic system from a thousand generations in that quantum still point is let loose. Change this whole game. I, I totally agree. Does that make sense? Does that fit for you from, you know, just having experienced it a week ago? Absolutely. It's like what my thoughts or belief systems believe to be true, like running automatically, and what would be a reaction? You're, I'm like literally in a still point, just watching it just evaporate. It's not even yeah. a, a big deal. It's just a choice, a construct. That's all it was. Was just <clears throat> a construct. It didn't really exist. It was just something that I was manufacturing. And the freedom and the stillness from that is amazing. Um, it's like life has returned tenfold. And life no, looks awesome. greener, more lusher. Yeah, it's fascinating. 
Well, and you actually just used a word that I've never thought of in terms of forgiveness or using it in, in conjunction with forgiveness, but evaporation, that's it. That in that instant where the mind that holds this whole epigenetic generational pattern in place when it lets go, evaporation, that, that's a great word to describe what forgiveness is and being able to reach that point where everything just gets still and yeah, quantum like process happens. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's awesome to hear. I'm just delighted. Uh, and and as I shared with you, you know, the day after you did your session, uh, I got a very and and am still enjoying a very sweet piece of your work in that I've and and every day you know in in the morning I start out usually with just quiet time and there for me is a whole new level of physiological serenity is the best word I've got for it that um, it's just at a new level uh, continuously for me now since in you know in just the last week so Thank you for your willingness and uh, and the years of work you've done to step up to the plate and uh, and do it. I know when you uh, when you did what was it about a year ago you started the uh, codependence to interdependence intensive and when I saw you know at doing it as an independent self study and I saw that when you completed it the score changes on your personal code evaluation were just monumental and so uh, pretty pretty powerfully committed obviously to your work and uh so kudos yeah. thank you yeah it, it it works besides belief systems and 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 thinking through it it just if you just apply it and render and allow the process and just get out of the way it works so effectively i'm just very grateful and thankful that you know you and Jeannie and everybody put this stuff together that was involved in, in this whole um, decoding the Aramaic and uh, putting tools together. I'm just very grateful and grateful for uh, Yeshua for um, coming here and teaching a couple thousand years ago. 2,000% on that one with you. That's, it, it's just, yeah. It still boggles my mind every time I think that 2,000 years ago he understood and said, hey, here's how you do it. And and you can do it as well as I can. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty amazing, pretty amazing. But, yeah, well, thank that's you cool. Again. Well, it'll be interesting. Your... Go ahead. No, yeah, thank you again for your guidance and everything. I'm very appreciative. And uh, I'll let you talk now. <laughs> Delighted. Well, I was just going to say that I I look forward to uh, to you keeping me posted on uh, things as they unfold and. If we can be of any support, you know where we are. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, David. Thanks for sharing that. That's awesome. Okay. Very cool. Take care. Hmm. Well, I'm complete for today. Huh. I, well, I'd, I'd be happy to just stay silent now and stay with us. Uh, and just having that short conversation with you, David, you're still on the line. This is kind of like uh, my physiology is buzzing, and uh, I could just spend the rest of the hour and not say another word, just breathe and be with it. However, we are on a radio show, so probably wouldn't uh, do too many folks much good if I just... Uh, on here and breathe. So, do we have anybody else in the phone queue with a hand up, sweetie, or anything else happening in the chat room? Nope, it is all quiet. Okay, well then let's move forward with enlightenment. We're up to. Well, uh, hand, the hand just went up. Oh, great. Okay, I'd just as soon do the hand. So. <laughs> Miss Susan, 610. 
Hey, all right. First of all, I hesitated to push one because what I'm going to talk about, I mean, I love the David's testimonial and so forth, and I can see why you're on a buzz there, Michael. And before I start, how are you doing with your feet and shoulders, team? Well, I was out pretty, uh, pretty uh, vigorously hopping around the garden today, so I'm, I'm rocking in that regard. That's great. That's great. How about you, Jeannie? I had um, acupuncture treatment this morning, and I'm a little bit sore right now, but um, I worked with someone for a couple of hours after I got back home, and so after the radio show, I think I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll make and it was so wonderful because she worked with someone who gave her opportunities to learn forgiveness while she was doing it. So it was very cool. <laughs> well, <that's laughs> I was, right, my, sweetie? Michael, yeah, Michael was listening in the background, and I'd put it on mute and go, ah! and then unmute it and go, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. She was guiding someone in doing, compu- not doing this work, but guiding someone in doing computer work who... Uh, as a rather challenging person to work with. <laughs> so she had fun. <laughs> oh, boy, good work. Thank you. I think she's. I think he helped to get her up to the edge where she's almost ready to consent to doing the quantum still point process. Wow, you mean Jeannie doing it or the person? Mm-hmm. Him doing it on no, me. No, Jeannie. My, <laughs> Michael doing it on me. Oh, wow. Well, I, I, I hope the marriage dynamic isn't going to be marred in any way with that. It might be enhanced. Oh, no. I, <laughs> the only thing I could fathom out of that would be the enhancement and the uh, the moving forward of it. No, that's... Uh, that's great. That's um, definitely sweetness. There's intensity oh, in it, wonderful. but... Uh, yeah. So, um, I, 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 well, it's none of my business. It's absolutely none of my business. I'm nosy, and you can say, it's none of your business. But I thought you had done Go a lot it. of breathing stuff with Jeannie. Oh, yes, of course. But this this whole um, protocol that I'm doing now is not something I have ever done before. I did it I the see. first time uh, about, geez, I'm not even sure now, two, three months ago. Uh, when, mm-hmm. if you remember, Michael was on the show and he was coming through town on his way to uh, to a funeral. And uh, so I kind of drew on some of the earliest work I did in my naturopathic training, uh, mm-hmm. which is a work that I wouldn't take into a regular intensive because it's too intense. It's not something that would fit in doing a group process. So I, mm-hmm. I drew on that and then kind of assembled, you know, over the years I've done so many different uh, trainings and my my uh, focal point has always been, like since I discovered the still point breathing process itself, and that's going back, I don't know, 43, 44 years ago, every mm-hmm workshop that I did, every study I did with someone else, everything that I have looked at, the the criteria has been, does this enhance people's ability to get into still point? And if mm-hmm. it did, then I would integrate it. You know, you when you did the intensive at Heartland, we did the energy field work. That's all. Each of those, mm-hmm. that's from about, you know, five or six different uh, intensive trainings that I've done over the last 40 plus years that I assembled that with because each piece of it enhances the still point. And so I took some of this very early work along with all of the energy field work I've developed over the years and then actually some recent things that I've been working on too. It's like for me, I I, I wish we could uh, adjust the, uh, the clock so that uh, yeah. we had maybe you know maybe 96 hour days because there's so much that uh-huh. I realize I don't know that I want to understand and that I want to get into and I want to you know I mean it's just like there aren't enough hours in a day and so so just uh, assembling that uh, and then after 
it was the first time that I've actually done this whole protocol on anyone, and it was kind of a spur of the moment. It was intuition that just demanded this when I worked with Michael, and, and maybe he's out there if he wants to chime in and, and offer anything. But then when Michael shared what, I mean, he had done years of traveling to different medical centers and healers and working on working through some really significant health challenges. And uh, in that following week, um, the changes in his, what he'd spent years trying to do were like, you know, in the 90th percentile of change wow. from 20 years of pursuit. And it's like, okay. I'm going to start to do this protocol as a one-on-one -on -one intensive process with people. And so, as I say, I think I, I haven't actually looked at the list, but I think uh, David, who we just talked to, was the eighth person I've done it with. And I'm refining wow. it, of course, as I go. So, mm -hmm. Sounds as if it's bearing tremendous fruit and getting the it word is. out and there, And for too. me, too. You know, for yeah. me, too, as the one who's doing it, like I'm, I'm getting, uh, you know, a, each person it's impacted me that I've done it with, but particularly with David this past weekend, it was just like monumental physiological shift yeah. for me. Like, thank you, David. <laughs> so. That's great. That's great. It is. So what's so on your mind? Difficult. You've got another direction to go in? I do. It might be related. Let's go for it. Uh, um, I've been preparing boxes of stuff to go up to the New York Library of of the performing arts and of course the easiest part is putting the musical scores in and the DVDs and the, the tapes and a hard drive with the backups but what I've come across in all of my stuff is that I've done sort of on the side without thinking about it I've done a lot of artwork I have a huge drawer full of paintings and drawings and cutouts a couple more drawers full and then a box full of, all through my life, I've drawn cartoon books and silly cards for people. And my mother kept, talk about learning how much she cared about me, she kept a scrapbook that's so fat that it's just busting out mm. of all, all kinds of memorabilia, programs, I, you know, concerts I did. And cards I made for Daddy, these silly little booklets and booklets for Mom and booklets for this person and that. And all through my marriage, I've, I've only stopped in the last couple of years. Every time a holiday comes, Tim Bingham is a recipient of some of those. And they're funny. And they're, they're my history. And so I'm overly attached to them. And I think, what's going to happen to these? My kids are probably just going to toss them in the trash. And I'm getting mm. upset about that. You know, I don't really like oh. the idea of that. But what so, so are they? You're getting, what are they for? You're getting up. Your 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 mind is getting upset about the possibility that something outside of you might occur. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, there's a big possibility oh, something oh, okay. outside of me might. Oh, I'll have to do some research on. Yeah, I'll have to do some research on whether that's even possible. I didn't think it was, but maybe it is. <laughs> Michael. You may be absolutely right, but what you said is totally unuseless. I mean, boy, is that a good thing. Totally <laughs> useless to me. <laughs> unuseless. So that means you're profoundly impacted and are going to use it. Eh? Well, that's cool. Ah, oh, what a great that word, cool. unuseless. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> your, Freudian, your Freudian slip just really turned it around in a very profound way, Susan. That's awesome. <laughs> I can't catch up with you, though, Michael. I'm glad you got it. <laughs> well, so <laughs> you want to hang up now, Michael? You've done your work for the day. This is good. Okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I'm just sitting here so, thinking, I've got this. I could throw it out right now and take care of the problem all in the trash and set it to fire. You I could. That. So or? My, my, my kids wouldn't have to deal with it. You or you could scan start, it and start have it a digitally. small museum. You could digitize it. You could turn it into a small museum. For who and what? I mean, really? 
if everybody did well, that, we'd be just inundated with everybody's memories, and we'd be a mess. Okay, so now let me see if I can ferret out that there might be a conflict in your mind. So there's a part of you that says, oh, my God, we've got to keep this forever. Oh, my God, if we kept it forever, it would be totally useless. Yeah. That sounds like some internal work. That sounds like there might be some forgiveness to do. Mm-hmm, maybe. And it sounds like perhaps some worksheets around attachment to the product of your life might be, you know, like canceling the need for your life to have meaning to someone else besides yourself because maybe you don't That's value it enough. Because maybe you don't okay, value Michael. it enough. All right, I'm going to get, I'm going to go on the attack here. What about go you? And I know I'm deflecting. <laughs> I'm going to. What about you and all your work? You're getting it out there. You've got people calling in yes. and saying this helped. Now, yes. my stuff just sits in a box. So. Well, maybe it's time you, to get it out there. That's what I said. Start a museum. Who knows the, the you know the humor and such that you could I mean you could turn it into a book maybe it's time for you to write a memoir and and here is the, here's your memoir and you might create a book that you know sets up a whole uh, I could see a college course on how to write your life you could write the book. And you've got the material to do it with. Maybe the title of the book could be something like, What Does a Fun and Amazing Life Look Like? It has been fun and amazing. Do you know how many people think that life just plain sucks because they have no idea how to do it differently? Yeah, probably a lot of us. Yeah. <clears throat> so maybe you could um, make your life meaningful on a whole other level by turning that into a piece of art, into a, a book that you publish and, and make available. You know, uh, I um, I found a, a book yesterday uh, about our, my son and daughter-in-law, not something that I'm into at all, but they're into hunting deer. You know, uh, Jeannie's dad had the farm. The farm's still there, a couple hundred yeah. acres, and you know they go out hunting and hunting season, and they just love it. You know, it's something. And I found this book that somebody had constructed. It's a large hardcover, almost like a um, an art book. And mm. in in the book, there are every other page has got a little pocket in it. Like, for instance, one of the pockets has some, uh, uh, literally a, a picture of somebody's uh, hunting license from, I think it was Illinois in 1933. Well, uh, there are pictures, I mean, just all kinds from all over the country of memorabilia, like this the book's probably maybe 75 pages, and of the 75 pages, 25 of them have a pocket in it with a, a, mm-hmm. an insert that you can take out and look at, you know, what did this, you know, the state senator or state representative write when they were going to do a, a celebration in the town he lived in? There's the letter that he wrote to the town council about the, you know, the, the hunting in their community. I mean, it's just a, a, a whole book of memorabilia, which... I got for Ryan and Gabby for the next time they go hunting to have out at the farm that they can hang out with and play with. And I could see you creating something like that that would have meaning to a lot of people. That's interesting. Thanks. Um, I've, yeah, you've gotten me to thinking that this might not be a dead end. Um, no, I, I think it could know, be really, you know... If it's if, especially if it's got the humor in it and the art, and I know I've seen some of your art online, and it's really cool what you do. I mean, you, the shadow—I think you called it shadow art—that you've done. I mean, I've never seen it before, 
And, you know, I mean, you could create a whole art course out of it. You could create it. Life as Art or Art as mm. Life could be the title of a book and a course that ends up impacting the world. Maybe as much as forgiveness does. Oh, I doubt that. But still, it's a good thought to think about. Anyway, Michael, thank and, you for And I'd suggest answering. that you do those worksheets around the part of you that has some sort of experience of loss, and it sounded mm-hmm. like it might even have gone to the edge of depression over, has my life been meaningless? If this all goes, what does it all mean? Yeah. I'm not sure. And there probably be some. That, there's probably. Well, I, I do some worksheets around, you know, the topics we're talking about, and the the part of you that I I'm not sure exactly what to call the upset that was there, but there was definitely an upset. And of course, it's not about what happens to that stuff. It's about what your mind makes up about what might happen to that stuff. Like my kids might just throw it all in the trash. Yeah. So I do some healing work around that, and then, hey, you've got a whole project to uh, occupy yourself with for the next 20 years. <laughs> and that could be very impactful is, well, for a lot of people. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, giving a whole other purpose and reason dietra for your life. Yeah, and there's a whole other part of this. Among all this stuff are love letters to me from a female friend that I have as a friend. When I first met her, she was in trouble in her marriage and still is, actually. We're good friends, Mm -hmm. but she got attached to me in a way that I I knew how she felt because I've done the same thing. It just didn't happen to be reciprocal there and she wrote me these letters she's french speaking some of them are in french and i saved them but i can hardly read them for some reason they're they're disturbing to me and she finally you know when you get a crush on someone it passes uh if you get to have a crush on somebody that you might marry later on, that's ideal, we hope, unless the matching bags of garbage are just too much to deal with. That's what happened with Tim and me. I had a huge crush on him, and I used to say, God, I've had crushes on so many people. Am I going to stop? What's going to happen when the crush goes away? Is there anything going to be left? And thank God there was. That was pure divine providence, because I couldn't have any way of measuring the value of our relationship while I had a crush on him I just everything he did was fantastic everything I just couldn't get past myself and I know this woman felt that way about me and I'm just Mm. I'm I'm mortified I don't know there's a, a lot of work to do there too I don't I don't even know where to begin with it, but it's part of this box. <laughs> this box of stuff. Mm-hmm. I really opened Pandora's box there. Well, as anyway, you speak Michael, about her still being in trauma, perhaps it's a cue to introduce her to some tools with which to work through that trauma. Yeah, that's true. She knows the work I do. Uh she hasn't She's very, very devout in a way that I'm not very attached to the the stuff in the church, all of it, the laws, and that's it's a different personality type. Um, I don't know how to describe it, but um, this would be like putting her prayer life into something so very different that I don't think she would want to do it. She she figures prayer is going to be the answer. And God is good. Who knows? Might be all she needs. But um, 
Yeah. Oh, and I wanted to say, I haven't told Luke your offer of having him come down to you, but I love the idea. And I even had a fantasy that if you do still point with him, he might be able to show it to me in a way that I would be able to accept. For some reason, I'm very resistant to it. Having to swallow, dry mouth, fighting, fighting it. Um, something in me just fights it. And thank goodness there are other ways to find things out. But Trapped I keep talking Satan. about it. And I'm thinking, <laughs> Thanks a lot. That's a big insult. But that's probably true. Well, rem- no, no, it's not an insult. It's just a fact. Remember again, in Aramaic, Satan is the resistor. I'm in resistance, yeah. and my mind misleads mm-hmm. me away from what's possible for me. That's all it means. Yeah. And okay. if that's, you know, if it's not true, then throw it out. But if it's accurate, oh, I can take another step toward letting go of this. Uh, need to fight it, and and usually someone who fights the still point process, uh, there's just something there that like I don't want to I don't want to deal with that I don't want to go there. Yeah. And you know maybe if Luke comes to do the quantum still point, you might come and mm-hmm. do the same time, and uh, I could do you both in parallel. No, I'm not coming. I want Luke to be but my front could, runner. Walk you walk you through <laughs> that uh, that resistance on yep. a whole different level if we did a one one. Yeah, maybe. I'll think about it. Uh, there's something very appealing Are you breathing? about it to me. No. Are you breathing? Of course not. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I would actually okay. uh I would love to do that process with you, I think you would um, blast you on a whole other level. Would There's a lot of do it in the same physiological the same work. No, no, no. It would require, like, I, I've had couples who inquired, and if a couple were to do it, they'd have to get separate hotel rooms. You know, when someone comes, they get a hotel room and we work in the hotel, so they'd have to get oh, separate do. rooms okay. to do that if they want to come at the same time. Yeah, I wouldn't do that work uh, with an... It's it's very private. I wouldn't do it with another individual in the room. Right. Well, Tim Hayes has been preaching private to meaning, us about... Private health. meaning personal, not intimate, but personal. No, I understand. I totally... I do yeah. understand. Tim on his program has been reading out of the Yeshua letters and uh, way of mastery about self honesty and i'm I'm sitting here feeling i'm I'm very self honest I know when I want to murder somebody I haven't hidden any of those feelings inappropriate sexual <laughs> fantasies oh I'm very honest with myself and I'm thinking now you're talking so to me you and murdered I'm anybody yet? Whole, no I haven't done it, but I've wanted to oh sometimes. good so isn't that <laughs> so <laughs> Anyway, so I, I boast to myself that I'm totally self-honest. Now you're talking to me about something I'm scared shitless to do, Michael. <laughs> so. Well, again, so anyway. if, I, if I'm not at a point where I will allow myself to really just let go into the still point breathing process, it's because on mm-hmm. the other side of it, there's something that I just really don't want to look at or deal with. And, you know, and who knows what that might look like. It might be uh, something very dramatic. Mm-hmm. And it might be nothing more than a, a, a terror fantasy of a child. That means nothing. Yeah. You know, yeah. who knows? So you, until you open right. up Pandora's box. And, you know, the, you know one of the... Uh, Interesting things, that whole story about Pandora's box, when right. they told us that story, they said, don't open Pandora's box. You never know what you're going to find in there. You know, one of the things, unfortunately, they didn't tell us was that if we don't ever open Pandora's box, then our life becomes Pandora's box. Yeah. It unfolds mm-hmm. right there in front of our eyes. You know, Pandora's box, of course, is just a a metaphor for the unconscious, just another term Mm -hmm. for the unconscious mind. Mm -hmm. So gently breathing with you. 
and just inviting it to notice the places where your breath wants to stop and just gently allow it. Embrace whatever's there. And one of the things that I always say to people when they're, you know, approaching something, they're like, oh, my God, I don't know if I can. You know, you survived it on the way in. If you breathe through it, you'll survive it on the way out. It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. That's the beauty of it. When you turn over to the mind of love, it's all, ultimately it's all absolutely meaningless. Mm-hmm. But while I've got a big chunk of meaning for it, as the Course says, I've given this all the meaning it has for me, then, yeah, it's, it can be yeah. pretty mega, major. All right. Well, thank you. A lot of work to be done. Okay. But I don't need to keep you anymore. Awesome. We'll appreciate the conversation and holding the space. Thanks for opening once again. (laughs) I appreciate you. Thanks, Michael. I appreciate you, too. All right. Take care. Blessings. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Well, Ms. Jeannie, we've got about 12 or 13 minutes left. Do we have anything happening in the chat room or anybody in the phone queue with a hand up? It is all quiet over here. When you were talking to Susan about, you know, it may be something big or it may be nothing. It's like if you've seen the movie, if you haven't, go see it, but the movie uh, Inside Out 2. And one Mm -hmm. of the creatures that they run into is down dark, deep in the hidden mind. There is the dark, deep secrets, and they're locked away. And after all the trailer, after the movie was over, and we stayed to see if they were going to show any outtakes, and they showed Joy go back down there and open that dark hole. And uh, the big dark secret monster comes to the door and she says, okay, I need to know what what's your secret. And he hesitates and he goes, I burned a hole in the carpet. Of course, you know, these are all thoughts and emotions that are in the mind of Riley, the little girl. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then... Um, Joy says, oh, I thought you were going to say it was when you peed in the pool. And the big dark guy pulls the door to again. (laughs) So they were little small things that she had locked them away in her unconscious. (laughs) Yeah, it's such a great metaphor for the work. I mean, those two films are so awesome. I just hope they're going to be receptive to bringing the new character called forgiveness into the process. (laughs) I think it would just be... Just, wow. So if you haven't seen Inside Out 1 or 2, best to watch them in that order. Watch Inside Out 1. It's pretty commonly available. And then 2 is in the theaters just this last week, and it was hilarious. Powerful. Very powerful. You know, great a great metaphor uh, for how people can, can get stuck in the nothingness of the what. Um, I did get a text from someone, and they suggested that we watch the movie um, Israelism and said it's a new movie. Uh, You can get it on Prime, a few other places, and it deals with the inherited trauma of the Jews and how that is blocking them from dealing with a solution in Israel today. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a good movie project for tonight, sweetie. Yeah. Because it's time for this whole trauma that's been going on in the Middle East for thousands of years to resolve these brothers that are still fighting after thousands of years. It's definitely time for a big wake-up call. And for the presence of love to start to move into these dark recesses of minds filled with traumas that in many cases amount to nothing. So 
if you're out there in listener land, does that resonate anything for you? If it does, push one. Let's talk about it. If there's anything in particular you're working with, dealing with in your world, if you can use support with the tools, or you just have any questions about the website, about the app, we do have that self-study intensive, codependence to interdependence. And that's something that people now take and do on their own. It includes two personal code evaluations, a pre- and post-personal code with specific feedback on where the blocks are. The personal code evaluation is about looking at where the blocks are in one's mind. And then some specific tools and instructions for overcoming those blocks as one goes through the 90 or 89 hours of uh, of video work that um, unfolds the the tools of why is this happening to me again, that workshop, healing through relationships, communication, did you hear what I think I said, mind shifters and still point breathing. So they're actually that self-study package or is a result of two live intensives. One was a 14-week. They were actually originally designed both to be 14 weeks. But the second one got into such a, uh, a powerful space around the communication and around the power person dynamic that we ended up adding an extra three weeks to it. So overall, there's a full, all the teaching, all the process work, questioning, answers from uh, from two Codependence to Independence Communication Practicums. So if you're interested in doing that, that's available as a package. If you go to whyagain.org and look at events, you'll see the description of that. Or if you want to talk about it, if you want to call, if you drop Jeannie a note via email, her email is j-e-a-n-i-e at whyagain.org, genie at whyagain.org. Make sure to include your phone number, and if you want more detailed information or you're ready to do that intensive, let us know. You have a hand. And, of course, oh, great, let's go for it. 904, you're on the air. Is this Dusty? Yes, it is, and aloha. Hey, we haven't heard your voice in a while. Aloha. (laughs) Yes, well, I've heard yours, and uh, I have a question uh, for for you, I wonder if you would please um, say the word to the to the heavenly neural structures. I think they're different ways of saying it. Yeah, and, and I I, I don't and, proclaim any proficiency at Aramaic pronunciation, but that's to the hoon and 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 that and. And how does that differ? I mean, can you explain, can you go into more detail what that is? Sure. Sure. If you read the Arama- or the Beatitudes as they're presented in, you know, the Greek interpretations of scriptures, you hear uh, uh, Matthew 5 starts out with uh, a number of passages that say, Blessed are they who are poor in spirit. Blessed are they who mourn their wrongs. Blessed are they, blessed are they, blessed are they. And that's the Greek misinterpretation of the word to the word. So each each of the Beatitudes where the Greeks interpreted the words as saying, blessed are they, the word in Aramaic was tuvehun and tuv. It's a three-part word. Tuv is an attitude of mind. A is possessive, and hun rec- or, or relates to the unconscious. So when we translate that word tuve hun, what we find, and I can remember as a kid, you know, hearing about and reading and hearing sermons on the Beatitudes, and I always thought, you know, it's a sermon on the mount, it's this sermon, it's a talk about uh, how to be nice, you know, how to... You know, how to be, how, how, what your attitude should be. But when you break down that word tuvehun and you start, and, and I actually, in the early days of working with the Aramaic, I took the 
enlightenment book that we've got, and I suggest everybody do this, even if you are reading from the enlightenment. Go back to Matthew 5, and all of the key words in the Beatitudes are left in brackets in Aramaic, and then go back into the dictionary, and do your own longhand translation of the Beatitudes. The third time I did that, what I realized is the Beatitudes are not a nice philosophy. The Beatitudes are a set of instructions. So Tuve Hun is saying, in essence, there's a neural structure in you that's unconscious. That neural structure is designed and implanted in you by the Creator to guide you to happiness and well-being. Here's how you make it conscious. So that one word, that would be an, uh, an accurate translation of that word in English. So before each oh. of the Beatitudes is saying, here, here's a set of instructions. There's a neural structure in you that you want to activate, and each of the Beatitudes is a key way into how to activate that originally implanted neural structure to guide you to happiness and well-being. It's like making that unconscious possession your conscious possession. Does that oh, make sense? Okay. Yes, I like that a lot. And um, uh, <laughs> I wonder if you would spill the beans on on your favorite uh, um, beatitude that 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 is the instruction for that. Well, each of them is pretty profound, and and actually, when we complete the call, I'll send you a link because oh, okay. and Jeannie's probably already put it in the notes. But we actually did a, I think it was a three-day session. There was a fellow who had come to Heartland who really got into the Beatitudes and did some work with them. And we spent three days uh, processing and going over the Beatitudes. So I'll send you a link to that. But I appreciate that. One of and the and one, by the way, it needs to go to my email instead of a little phone. Yes, I'll do that. Thank you. I can do that. So the... One of, one of the ones that I think is kind of fun is the first one. You know, if you talk, if you listen to Yeshua, he says, I have a connection for you to make, and this connection is more important than anything you believe or have to do with me. Like, this is it. Wow. And, and, and that would be to connect to your breath, to connect to Ruka de Kutcha, yeah. a feminine elemental force in you that when invited into activity will undo the effect of your errors and teach you the truth. So he's saying that's like prime importance. And so in the Aramaic, the first beatitude basically says a latent neural structure implanted by the creator to guide you to happiness and well-being becomes your conscious possession you whose home is in the breath, in the eternal forces from God. The Greeks tra misinterpret it. I, you know, I, I still unconsciously uh, you know, tend to use the word translate. There are no Greek translations of the Aramaic scriptures. There are no. There, there are Greek misinterpretations, just Greek yeah. misinterpretations. But in the Greek, what it says is, Blessed are they who are poor in spirit, as opposed to a latent neural structure implanted by God, the guide of happiness and well-being becomes your conscious possession, you whose home is in the breath, is in the eternal forces from God. Wow, like that, living I mean, your that, breath, make that, sure your breath moves through you. I mean, that couldn't be more 180 degrees out, you know? Um, uh, that's there. it. That's, that's exactly my take on what's happened with virtually every key word. You've heard me say this before. You know, Vladimir Lenin, responsible for more deaths on planet Earth than any human being in history, says the way you destroy a culture is change the meaning of its words. And every uh -huh. key word, every key word, the word love, the word uh, that represents a human being, everything has been turned exactly backward. And so... This beatitude says, "Have your home in Ruka de Kutcha, the breath, as opposed to be poor in wow. it, give it away, wow. get rid of it." 
I'm so glad to hear that because every evening when I meditate and, th- and different times during the day, I deliberately do breath uh, within that, the two vehun as best as I understand it um, in, uh, in my own neurology, I guess I'll call it, because uh, I need all the help I can get, so I do that. Well, from what you've said in the past, I understand that you've done a lot of breath work for a long, long time, you know, long before you started listening to the show, and it is key. It is key for sure. Yeah, yeah, and you know what? I have friends that have had had dementia. I've had friends that are just going down, and I've I, their brothers or, or sisters, typically brothers, and I, I've mentioned it to him, like, wow, look at this treasure, this breathing thing. Wow, man. We did, da, da. And they go, oh, yeah, that's nice. And and I eventually get to the point, because I love them, I practically beg them to do it, you know, and it still doesn't happen. And so I go, okay, to each their own, I guess. I don't know. But yeah. I I know that I, 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 for one, is it's, life and death for me, kind of, you know. Yeah. Well, in Aramaic, yeah. you know, if you go back to the Aramaic creation story, it doesn't say God sent out a spirit. It says the creator sent out his breath. Yeah. I mean, it's, literally our direct, it's literally our direct connection. Without it, we're dead. You know, five minutes, and yeah. that's it. And pretty soon I'm going to go strap on some fins and go out into a really big ocean to where I have to, I mean, there's a lot of the dance. It's a dance is what it is, but it's the breath is everything out there. Mm. Yeah, I can and imagine. I love it yeah. for that. I love it for that. I, I have to tell you, it's it's a challenge, uh, and it makes me get it right. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Very and, cool. And, and uh, yeah, man, and I... <clears throat> Well, thank you for sending that stuff, and, and I definitely will read it. And um, the only thing I will say about the Greeks is if you look at their mythology, oh, my God. The only part of it that I even can relate to is the the whole, uh, uh, some of the, the Gaia and the whatever, at the Muses and Orpheus. Past that, right. everything else is pretty much hate and blah, you know, yeah. blah, blah, blah. blah. Greek tragedy. I don't know why. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you why. Why? Yeah, I'll tell you why. Because when you cut yourself off from the active presence of love, that's all that you got is the oh, genetic trauma of the generations. That's yeah. Well, that's all that's left friend. as an advisor for behavior is whatever's in your genes. Mm. Whatever's in carbon-based memory. Replicate mind. It just replicates, replicates, replicates. And, of course, the crazier yeah, yeah. it gets, the, crazy, the crazier people get with it, and the more bizarre the behaviors become. Oh, I get it. So if you don't lead with love, that's what you got left over to deal with. That's it. That's oh, it. Oh, man. That's the only beautiful. advisor available. Yeah. Yeah, boy, another case for walking around with a heart uh, and a mind and a soul full of, of of love and non-judgmentalness and acceptance and blah, 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 that kind of thing. Yeah, human life. Yeah, it's man. an amazing thing. Oh, it is. And I appreciate I know we're about out of time here, but I appreciate the show, and I appreciate you and Jeannie. And, of course, every, you know, people say that, but... Uh, I and they mean it, <clears throat> and me too. <laughs> awesome. Thank well, you for that. I appreciate, appreciate you, my it. friend. All right. It. All right. Blessings. Have a good one. Take care. Too, Thanks, bye-bye. everybody, for joining us. Create the best year yet of your eternal life. It's an awesome gift to give the world. <laughs>